Next, we'll talk about the uh, ADL model, the autoregressive distributed lag models. So the um, uh, motivation is that, so this is the ori original AL model. Yt equal to beta 0 plus beta 1, the lag 1 plus beta 2, the lag 2, plus up to beta p, the lag p periods of y. But in, mo in some of the economic theories, the variables other than the depends on previous value they also depend depends on the value of another variables say t minus one so you need to add another lag variables up to beta uh, delta q x t minus q so we call this a d l p q model Some variables does not only depends on itself, it also depends on other other distributed variables. So that's why this is called a distributed lag model. Okay. And we have the assumptions that the EUT given all the Yt minus one, Yt minus two, and Xt minus one, Xt minus two, up to all the X and Y are all equal to zero. Okay, so there are many examples. Well, maybe in the Phillips curves. Okay, the Phillips curve is a negative relation be between the unemployment rate and inflation rate. But some economists will also think that okay, the inflation rate is the function of the inflation rate in the past few period. Okay, so they can rewrite the Phillips curve as the following: the change in inflation at time t is equal to some value minus the inflation rate at one period before minus the inflation rate at the second period before and you still need to regret the function as the unemployment and this is some kind of uh, Previous results drawn by some economists show the inflation rate is some negative relation of previous inflation rate. That means in previous previously the inflation rate may be very high, then in the next period it will decrease, and it's also some function of unemployment rate. Okay, so that means the inflation rate just is not only a function of previous le previous inflation rate, but previous unemployment rate. Well, because before we move on, I will introduce you one jargon in time series econometrics, which is called Granger causality. Well, Granger is a very famous economist, so many universities just name name him to memory him to make them. So, for example, in HKUSD, we have a cohort called Granger. So the, that grandeur is this grandeur, okay? So what's the meaning of grandeur causality? So grandeur just, grandeur causality test is a, actually an app test. So he's testing whether the beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to up to beta p equal to 0. So actually grandeur is, what grandeur is doing is to test whether the coefficient of the past value is significant or not. So if it is significant, okay, if they are statistically significant. So say beta one is significant. We will say that y t minus one will Granger cause y t. Okay, y t minus one is Granger cause y t. Well, this is just some jargon in econometrics. This causa this causality does not mean the actual causality. So causality means that in a randomized situation, the change in x will lead to change in y. But here, we, we are just talking about the correlation between the past value and the present value. So this is not actually the actual meaning of causality. So grandeur causality is just a type of correlation. Okay. So let's move on. Well, of course, in ADL model, you are 
you need to forecast, you can use to forecast the future. Otherwise, why we have to learn about the previous value, right? So the forecast, if you do forecasting, there will be some forecast error. The forecast error is again, is given by the actual value of t plus one minus the estimated value of t plus one given time t. So here, the forecast error will be equal to u t plus one minus the beta zero hat minus beta zero plus beta one hat minus beta one times y t. Here you still have the another independent variables. So delta one hat minus delta one x t. So this is the forecast error in the. So if only, yeah. So this is the forecast error. And given this forecast error, we can calculate something called the mean square forecast error, which is given by the expected value of y t plus one minus y t plus one given the t hat. Okay. So if you think clearly, this mean square mean square forecast error is just the square of the root mean square forecast error. Okay. Therefore, the, you can express this term. So you can replace this term by the whole expression and write that the mean square forecast error will be equal to variance of the u plus the variance of the remaining one. The remaining will be beta 0 hat minus beta 0 plus beta 1 hat minus beta 1 times yt plus delta 1 hat minus delta 1 times xt. So this is the mean uh, mean square forecast error. Okay. Well, at the end, we will talk about the information criteria. Well, basically, we have two information criteria. One is called BIC, and the other one is called AIC. So what is the information criteria means? Well, actually, you are, what you are doing is the ALP model, okay? Y is a function of last period plus second period plus the third period, but how many legs should we post, right? Whether four legs or six legs is better. So it depends on it. Then you need to do some tests to see which, what is the number of the best leg to be chosen. Okay. Then you can make use of the BIC and AIC concept. So these two criteria is used to test how many legs should I choose. So for the BIC, the formula is log of SSR derived by T plus the P plus 1 times log T derived by T. Okay, so you can select the number of legs and plug in the value and to see which BIC is smaller. Say you are decide you are deciding two legs or three legs, just plug in the value of the SSR of two legs and here replace P by two. And again you plug in the value of SSR in three and plug in three here. And you can see which value should be smaller. Okay. So say with more legs, the SSR the SSR will be smaller. But this will be greater. So you need to find the maximum that minimize the BIC. Well, apart from the BIC, you can also choose the AIC. AIC will be given by the log SSR as a function of T derived by T plus P plus 1 times T divided by T. So the difference is T is a maximum value and BIC is a minimum value. While in doing the empirical research, you need you you better use both of the information criteria and to see which is which can minimize both criteria. But theoretically, so the BIC is much is more consistent than AIC's, and it requires some mathematical proof. So we upload the I will update the video once I 
understand how to prove the consistent properties of AIC and BIC.